Speaking of the will, um, <clears throat> it does seem pretty axiomatic and pretty obvious that sentient beings have a will. Uh, again, I'm not saying we have free will, but we have will. Now, we, that will could be shown to be not free is an interesting point, but how it could be demonstrably free is in itself interesting. <laughs> um, again, I don't really see how it's a decidable issue. Um, <clears throat> but let's say that we do have a will. What do we want? <laughs> um, I find it absolutely fascinating how Schopenhauer, I guess, has informed our view of what we ultimately want. What's the meaning of life? What's the purpose of existence? What's all of this? Um, Schopenhauer seems to think that the, resu the main result we want out of life is to just live it and pass on our DNA, I guess, although he wouldn't have said it that way. But Darwin seems to posit the same thing. And you turn on any nature channel or um, show on anthropology or even history and everything, it inevitably... It's durability that gets top marks. Um, you know, the Romans, if you last, you know, a thousand years the way they did, you occupy an important part of our history. Um, all that they had to do was build a big empire and then last. Uh, now, I'm not so sure that I agree with that. <laughs> and I think that may be obvious. Or maybe I, I do agree with it actually in a certain way, but... I don't think that tells the whole story. I think that, we, yes, we do want to survive, and we do want to proliferate, I guess. It looks that way. Um, but when we stop and think about it consciously, when we're not just sort of you know, living our lives and going with the flow of things, if you stop and think, what do we want? As, I say, as a lot of people say, Nietzsche kind of stopped and thought. <laughs> he said, uh, wait a minute, yes, we want to stay alive, but we want to stay alive because it, we, in order to achieve our ultimate purpose, the will to power, I guess, we have to be alive. It's, uh, being alive is just the first step, the first rung on the ladder. Uh, sure, I guess the will to power does seem to be pretty, I won't say unarguable, but it looks fairly ax axiomatic. It's a good thing to posit, because when you look at what people do for, you know, to extend their influence, to possess things, to convince other people of their point of view, etc., you know, it, it seems as though that is at least one of the many things that we will. <clears throat> um, some people just say that the only, uh, the only good in life is pleasure, which I think that that's kind of an infantile view of things, to be perfectly honest, because I think that you know, once once you get enough pressure or pleasure, you can only eat so many chocolate bars, you can only have so many orgies or whatever, and after a while it just gets deadened. You're you get jaded. Um, but uh, not everybody does, of course. Some people, you know, I guess it, it would. It looks to me as though some people just think that pleasure is a perfectly legitimate end of life. Um, now, since I was talking in the Indian context. The Indians have um, sort of a dichotomy between the path of desire and the path of renunciation. The path of desire means that you go out into the world and you find things that are supposedly going to do it for you, like pleasure, power, fame, wealth, that kind of thing. And after a while, you know, I guess in the Indian way of looking at things, after a few dozen lives or hundred lives or whatever, uh, you get sick of it. Uh, I Again, I don't really deal in the issue of reincarnation because at the end of the day I you know I guess I've never really looked into it seriously and I don't see any evidence for it um, but I do not I don't really feel like disputing it either um, <clears throat> but it does strike me that some people they're just put together in such a way that pleasure does it for them uh, or power or wealth does it for them they will think that they've had a successful life um, whereas other people you just you say all right I've got all that, and it doesn't really do it for me. Uh, ennui. <laughs> you know, the the problem of the aristocrat. The, uh, 
He's got everything, and it means nothing to him. Richard Corey went home last night and put a bullet through his head type thing. Okay. I guess some people would stop there and say, okay, well, that what essentially what that means is that there's no meaning to life. There's no meaning to be had in life. There's our, We have wants that cannot be fulfilled, and we can't even identify what they are. I'm, I'm missing something, but I don't know what it is. Well, in the Indian view of things, it's... Um, usually summed up, not always, but as Satchitananda, um, which is being, um, knowledge, and joy. Those are the three things that we want. We want to exist, we want to understand what all this is about, and we want joy. Um, but again, those are three words. What does that mean? I think that, you know, on the surface of it, you say Satchitananda, and I think that those three terms um, would be very easy to sort of attack if you're not prepared to delve deeply into what that what that uh, uh, trio of, of, of things actually are. For example, the third one, happiness, you sort of say, or joy or happiness, you say, well, that's it? Happiness? Are you kidding me here? I... Uh, all I gotta be is a, a jelly head and walk around with a big smile on my face all the time and then everything's wonderful. Again, an Indian philosopher, I guess, would say uh, that's not, you obviously then don't have joy because joy is something that you're going to have to have that will uh, that will stay with you and actually be sufficient unto itself. You won't get that feeling of, hmm, something's missing or I'm lying to myself or whatever. Um, a lot of people, I think, fear happiness for many reasons, or fear joy for many reasons, and uh, the first of them being, I guess, um, this is a false feeling. Um, people who are depressed, or in my case, when I was in my severe depression, I did have that attitude that you got to watch it about this happiness or this joy thing, because it's just setting you up for a horrible fall. Uh, well, that depends on what you're happy about or what the nature or cause of your happiness is or what your happiness hinges on <laughs> or your joy hinges on. If your joy hinges on, um, I don't know, something precarious, then it's precarious joy, isn't it? But if it's joy that is not precarious and is able to withstand disasters, then it's more solid. It's not the kind of joy that you have to sort of be suspicious of, or at least not as suspicious as the more precarious types. Um, Satchitananda, I think, is a fascinating, um, uh, fascinating trio of, of ideas uh, that I think you could end up exploring for your, you know, one's whole existence. Uh, chit, which is, I guess, knowledge. Um, in my case, comes out in a near insatiable curiosity. Um, I want to know. I want to know as much as I can possibly know. Um, I'm never, capable, I'm never, never able to stop thinking about everything, and I can't sit still, at least psychologically or whatever. I want to know things. This seems to be ineradicable from my personality, if you want to call it that. Um, but then again, there are those who say we don't want to know. <laughs> the uh, you know the first line of the call of Cthulhu, where he says um, it's very nice that we can't put all this all of our thoughts together because the, if we understood what was actually going on in terms of our existence, uh, we'd probably go insane. Um, I bring up Zopfi in the Last Messiah, and he says we will go insane if we actually see reality for what it is, if we actually grasp what's happening. Um, I think that Zappi just made a bald assertion, actually. I, I, I'll say that that could happen. In fact, existential panic, which is what he was describing, actually is a real problem for some people. Um, but knowledge, I think we want it. I think that, you know, the old horror story thing, don't go in that room, but we know the person is, because something in us wants to know what's in there and is willing to risk uh, the consequences. So... Yeah, um, those three things, I think, are are convincing, compelling um, components of the will, or outlets, or aims of the will, or whatever, what the will wills, what, what our desires actually desire. 
Um, but working with those within uh, the context of attempting to apply them to a human life, whew, I think one could spend one's entire life doing that, and I think an awful lot of people actually do. <laughs> they don't have to be Indians. Um, but it's, it's fascinating how we have, you know, the will to life, which is Schopenhauer, the will to power, which is Nietzsche, the, you know, other wills now that are, you know, will to meaning, I guess that's Frankel, or among others, or the will to just about anything, the will to knowledge. Um, I'd like to see if, you know, if there's a competitive version of um, Satchitananda, the Indian uh, three wills, or that which we will. I think that someone would be hard-pressed to, to go beyond that, uh, or to add something to that. Although, to be perfectly, to, to be fair, though, um, the path of desire actually includes a lot of the things that, say, Nietzsche would say. He would say, we want power, we want to conquer our enemies, we want to expand our influence, we want to expand uh, our fame, or just whatever. Um, that, the Indians put in the path of desire which, you know, um, they would say is good, but only up to a point, whereas Nietzsche would say it's what we are, basically. Um, on that, I'm not sure that I agree with Nietzsche. I can see that it is uh, something that we desire. Uh, it seems unarguable. He would say that my desire to get on the Internet and spout off about my ideas is a manifestation of the will to power. I want to convince other people that I'm right. Even if I'm trying to sort of not do that, he's, you know, he'll say that that's, that's part of who you are. Maybe he's right, I don't know. <clears throat> but I will say, though, that I want other things. There are other things that I'm willing to go out of my way to get. Now, I think when, where you run into trouble is when you try to tell somebody else what their will is telling them to do. <laughs> um, which is, again, what our society, our civilization does. It's just, we, there's, there seems to be a certain set of proper desires that any, I don't know, normal person should follow, and, you know, a certain set of normal desires that the entire animal kingdom, I guess, follows, i.e., the only thing that we want and what ultimately makes us what we are is the will to life. Um, again, that so permeates uh, our view of evolution and... Uh, and stuff like that, our evolution of anthropology, our, 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 our sorry, our, our understanding of anthropology, our understanding of um, just the, the uh, human biology itself, or animal biology itself, seems to be all predicated on the idea that survival is an end in itself, or survival of one's DNA. Um, no, I, I, I seriously, I, I don't think so at all. Um, we want to be alive, yes, but why we want to be alive is not necessarily an end in itself. And in that sense, I think that science has gotten rutted, um, again, in its insistence on demonstrability. Um, it's obvious that all things desire to live, and can we really agree on anything else that all things desire? Okay, so that must be the highest desire. No. <laughs> And just because it's the most common doesn't mean that it's uh, the highest desire, or even the one that will drive us to the greatest lengths. Um, being, knowledge, joy. Um, that does it for me. But again, is, is that the end, or is that simply the beginning? Okay, you know what you want. Go get it now. Uh... <laughs>